Welcome to Out With Dan, the podcast that spotlights and examines the voices of LGBTQ plus authors, characters, and our allies. Together, we lift our voices and we tell our stories. I'm Dan White. Join me as I chat with this week's author. Hello and welcome back to Out With Dan. Today, I'm excited to talk to John Copenhaver about the savage kind. Welcome, John. Thanks, Dan, for having me. It's great to be here. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. I love this book. It is it is a mystery inside of a mystery. I, there are so many layers to this book. Um, was it difficult with the many layers? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think writing, writing, writing it um, nearly killed me. And interestingly, I, um, I continue to add layers. This is something I like to do to myself. It's like I choose to make something as hard as possible to do. Um, feel free to psychoanalyze me, but <laughs> I do do this with novels. So you have two, you have two point of view characters, and then. Um, uh, and then sort of a mysterious uh, point of view that uh, is from essentially, I guess, the, the, the future tense of the, mo- the, the novel or, you know, in, in the future, um, looking back and sort of um, positioning my narrators, um, you know, and kind of questioning and, and, and commenting on what is going on. So, you know, it was it was it, it was it was a challenge to sort of weave all that together. And it didn't sort of happen immediately. I, I had to get the base story down and then kind of start uh, figuring out the voices and the, the points of view and how they crossed over and intersected. I love that. Um, so we have uh, Philippa Watson and Judy Peabody. Is that mm-hmm. right? And That's correct. Is, so is Watson, uh, was that specific for from Sherlock Holmes or did it just happen? Yeah, so of course, and this is true for most authors, names are incredibly important. Um, and Watson is a direct reference um, to, you know, Holmes and Watson because we're dealing with another detective pair. In a lot of ways, um, both Judy and Philip represent, you know, Sherlock Holmes and Watson because um Philip is sort of the, the quote unquote straight character, um, not literally straight, but in the sense of like kind of being the 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 um, sort of typical kind of point of view of the time period, um, and Judy is much sort of in, in high contrast to that, mm-hmm. um, and I think that 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 was you know that sort of detective pair at least to a certain degree was an inspiration for the character. So yeah, that was my little nod. <laughs> And I love that. I, they both come with such differing characteristics, uh, if that's the right word. They're very different people, yet they yeah. find each other and they have so many similarities. And I like that. You know, I, I find a lot of times that differences often sort of draw people together, you know, the old opposites attract thing. But I love yeah. their attraction to each other. Uh, give us a, a sense of what that's like. So um, I think that it's really both these uh, girls find themselves meeting. It's 1948, Washington, D.C. And, um, you know, Philippa just moved to town. Um, and and Philippa is definitely, like I mentioned, sort of, you know, pearls, bows in the hair, saddled Oxford troops, sort of, of the time period. Um, at least it's how she presents to the world. I think there's a lot going on underneath um, you know, struggling with her sexuality for one. Um, also, she is motherless, um, and she, she does have um, a, a, a mother figure in her life. But really, her mother died when she in childbirth. So there's sort of a loss there. Um, and then Judy is a, it just it's incredible. Like she just shouts. You know, she's like the goth kid before there were goth kids. Like she's wearing. <laughs> Like, you know, flapper kind of apparel and strange. She's like, it's got this sharp bob, like this was not in vogue at all. Um, and she's sort of styling herself, uh, you know, very much like, you know, a 1920s sort of party girl. 
and um, and but you're doing it to sort of push people's buttons. So you wouldn't necessarily expect the two to come together, but there is an underlying acknowledgement. I think makes their queerness that they detect in each other. I think they both feel like outsiders. I think that and just generally in this time, I think they also bond. They have sort of an intellectual bond. They're both smart girls. They're both into reading. Um, they're both very sort of taken with their sort of romantic English teacher um, as a sort of model as a modern woman. They don't really identify with much of the world around them, um, but uh, but they handle it in very different ways. And so it's, it was one sort of fun part of the book was, was to have the two girls as we're, you know, getting wrapped up in, in solving a murder and, and what happened to their English teacher. Um, they also sort of start crying out these bits and pieces of themselves. And there's a lot of uh, layers to both girls to, to be uncovered. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I will say, I'll give you a little pat on the back. One thing that I really loved was their love of reading and books and yeah. their English teacher. And I thought that was, that was a really nice thing to see for characters. You know, so often mm -hmm. we have characters that don't have that role model that they look up to or yeah. that they fall in love with. Um, you're a professor or a teacher? I am. So many years I taught high school and ran an English department at a day school outside of DC. I am now teaching uh, at undergraduate students creative writing. Um, oh, I love that. So, yeah, so I've, I've pivoted a bit, but I, I do love high school, and uh, I think it's just a lot of a lot of fun working with high school students. I mean, I love all students of all ages. Um, uh, well, not maybe of all, but uh, <laughs> middle school and up. <laughs> uh, I got uh, you. I have, I have great range for teachers, uh, for uh, teachers who teach uh, the, the younger grades, but it's it's a different thing and um, not necessarily my thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's all right. And I do, once again, I, I, I do want to say that I just thought that that giving two characters the love of reading and the love of novels, I thought that was a great thing to give to them. And I enjoyed reading that part. And I sort of wondered, because I grew up reading Nancy Drew. I just loved Nancy Drew. The Hardy Boys were all right, but Nancy Drew was my my bag. But I, I kept thinking of them as George and Bess. I'm like, what would have happened if George and Bess went off on their own? So I was like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, well, that was sort of another another team of, I, I guess I'm, I'm once again, love layering. So I'm layering on another you know, team of de detective um uh, uh sort of traditional detective character so i think that that um really i think played a big role um in in how i sort of sh shaped those characters nancy drew uh you know of course they're you know these are Na nancy drew characters that um end up crossing some moral boundaries so uh <laughs> it's right. Um, there, you know, but I think that I it truly like, you know, I, I think there's something about reading those at a younger age and kind of seeing that. And, you know, honestly, even, even if you're, you know, you look at Agatha Christie, there, we talk about sort of detectives in this sort of singular fashion, but so many of the detectives that I've really been attracted to as um, a reader have been the pairs. Um, and so I just think that's really interesting. Um, two people kind of working together to solve something. I agree. And of course, so what is, how difficult or easy or fun or whatever word you want to say was writing characters in the late forties? Uh, so I'm really attracted to that time period. I think I always have been, um, it's of interest to me for several reasons. First of all, I, I love a lot of the, you know, film from that time period, the great film noir um, that, you know, had sort of a bleak, in any case, a very bleak outlook, but the storytelling was so rich and the character characterization was so rich and the stylization was just uh, amazing. You, even if you go back and watch these films, the plots and the dialogue are just so sharp. 
Um, it's just, it was a real, you know, a, a, a golden age. And so I love to capture that moon, that time period, but also really wanted to engage with the, the issues that were up in that time period. Um, you know, this is my mother's generation. My mom's in her early nineties right now. And, um, I know from her own experience that, you know, the options for women were sort of opened and then closed very quickly. Um, with the end of the war. And I think that, um, you know, I, I think that I wanted to explore that in, not just with women, but also um, with LGBTQ people or, or both really. Yeah. Um, and I think that, um, you know, the, the, the war did a lot to bring, you know, gay men and women together. Um, uh, it did a lot to give women, you know, a, you know, a place, you know, and time to sort of not just be this sort of limited, play these limited roles that were sort of slotted out for them, you know, in the 1930s. <clears throat> and um, and then it happens and then suddenly it contracts, like quickly, it contracts. Yeah. Then we get the incredibly conservative 1950s um, we're writing about now. And I'm like, man, it was just, it happened very quickly. And so, and I, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to draw an, an absolute parallel to our times now, but I think we we are dealing with sort of an interesting parallel um, with the 1950s and our sort of current, you know, um, you know, economic and maybe even a little bit social, but definitely economic, I mean, um, excuse me, a political um, mm -hmm. sort of world right now. And so, I think that. Um, <clears throat> I think that's just sort of interesting thing to explore as well. Uh, so I, I guess there are a lot of reasons to, to be attracted to the sort of post-war years. I've, I have some friends who say that they are not particularly fond of reading historical novels. I particularly mm -hmm. am, especially if they're well-written like, as yours is, John. To me, it, it's interesting because it really doesn't matter if it was the 1940s, the 1980s, or last week, because as you say, we're repeating some of the same things over and over again. It is as if one decade we, we're sort of hedonistic and free, and then the next decade they want to put us in a box somewhere. And I think that that is something that you've picked up on so well here that I enjoyed the fact that it was set in the late 40s and it felt like it, it smelled like it, it read like it, and I thought it was a great job. And there's no Great. cell phone. <laughs> and what? <laughs> it's funny. I love phones, but honestly, if an author can find a way not to yeah. use the phone, whether it's set in today's world or back in time, I'm like perfect because it gives us uh, a it yeah. gives us a build up. I think. Yeah. Well, I think. I mean, now what the thing is is now you have all you'll see this time and time again, particularly in mystery novels, is that the authors are finding ways to get rid of the cell phone and it's almost becoming clearly to get rid of the cell phone. Um, well, you know, then, you know, turn and look at some, uh, then I invite you into the world of historical fiction. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> you don't have to deal with those problems. Um, you know, it's interesting, you know, I, I think sometimes about why people decide things like I don't read historical fiction and it's just sort of, they've just decided that they are not going to read that or, or frankly, any, I could say that for any genre. And I think um, I always want to challenge people, like step outside your comfort zone. You may discover some, some gems. I think sometimes these come from um, conceptions about what the genres are like, um, you know, it's, it's like you expect historical to be sort of these costume dramas that they aren't necessarily, um, I mean, there's probably are books that sort of focus heavily on that kind of thing, but, um, I think there's a lot, there's a lot of depth and breadth in historical fiction that might surprise you. Um, and I will say that for any, like, you know, if you're like, I've decided I'm never going to read a fantasy novel, well, read them, you know, maybe do a little research, but find one that may be a little more suited to your interests. And, um, and so I think that sometimes um, we do that. I've, I've been guilty of doing that as well. And I'm always sort of pleased to when I find something that kind of is outside my genre and I, I can kind of explore and, and, and find new things. So I think it's an interesting question, um, but I do hear that sometimes too. 
And I, you know, there's some people that only read romance because their mother read romance or grandmother read right. romance. And I understand it. You know, we do we do want to read things that we relate to, but I agree with you. I'm like, you've got to stretch your horizons occasionally. Maybe right. you picked up a fantasy book that you didn't particularly care for. Try another one. And if you determine you only want to read mysteries, thank God we've got plenty of those out in the world and a lot of great writers. <laughs> are you yeah. working on are you working on something now? I am. I uh, well, I have just finished the manuscript for Hall of Mirrors, which is a follow-up to Savage Kind. Oh. Um, and uh, contains some of the same characters set in 1953 uh, during the Lavender Scare um, in Washington, D.C. And um, I, I kind of moving into sort of discussing, you know, some we find Judy and Philippa in their early 20s, um, and they meet um, a pair, of, a writing pair, actually, these men, um, who write under a, a, a pseudonym together, and they're gay men, they're lovers, and they make they befriend these these men, um, and one of those men ends up dead, and so they are sort of you know participating in solving and figuring that out. But one of the other the the char the character that does not win, uh, wind up dead is a point of view character, a uh, line on. So I really had a lot of fun writing him. Um, and uh, you know, exploring that voice time period. Um, so you know, and uh, then like I am for whatever reason writing currently writing a ghost story. <laughs> um, oh, all right. right. Yeah. Contemporary. So I've done all this pitching of of, of, <laughs> of <laughs> historical. And I'm totally writing a contemporary novel now, but it's okay. I, I can love them. I can write. And love both. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, and I think also, you know, it's it, if the if one of the writers, the one that dies, comes back as the ghost, we'll enjoy that as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll cross over, cross over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, uh, John, this has been so wonderful. Do you have a social media or a website you'd like to share? Sure, um, I'm pretty easy to find on social media. You can find me at John. Hope 74 on uh, Instagram and just John Copenhaver on Twitter and Facebook. And my uh, website is www.johncopenhaver.com. So um, I'm pretty easy to find. For whatever reason, there's a, a North person a football player called John Copenhaver. So don't confuse me with him. I'm terrible at <laughs> football. <laughs> well, I, can't yeah. football state, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like find the right one. <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not that one. <laughs> all right, that's all right. But you are this one, the wrote the man yeah. that wrote the savage kind. So yes, thank am. you so much for joining me, John. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a delight. Thank you. Hang on for me just a second. Thank you for joining me for this week's episode of Out with Dan. You can find more information about this podcast and its host at outwithdan.com, on Twitter at outwithdan, and on Instagram and Facebook at gooutwithdan. This podcast is hosted by Authors on the Air Global Radio Network, and the theme music is provided by bensound.com. Join us again soon for the next episode of Out With Dan. <laughs>